Hey there, thanks for tuning in to your one-stop shop for non-stop rocks, Great Basin Prospecting here. We've got a special episode today of Great Basin Meets the Great Lakes. So six of our seven rocks today are coming from Lake Michigan, courtesy of a subscriber, big thank you there. And the seventh rock is from the great state of Nevada. We've got some really cool ones, so make sure you stick around until the end. Please subscribe if you're not currently a subscriber and welcome back and thank you to all the current subscribers. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first up, we've got a septarian nodule from Lake Michigan. So the top is kind of a plain brownish color, but then here on the sides, we can see some really cool crystal veining that's showing through and we have a little bit of red coloration which is interesting and a bit unique for these as far as I've encountered thus far. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside and that is a stunner. Beautiful. Wow. So what's really cool about this aside from the gorgeous calcite lightning veins that are running throughout is the red band that's going around the perimeter of that round ball there and really, really pretty. If you've seen some of the other lightning stones that I've had on the channel, you'll know that they generally form around a nodule or ball like that. And this one has a really cool red halo, as well as the calcite crystals that are branching out from it. And these crystals have some inclusions in them as well, maybe some stretched out mica or biotite, but really, really pretty. Let me know what you think about this one down in the comments. Okay, next up, we've got this rock, also from Lake Michigan. And from the outside, we can see we've got a lot of colors going on. We've got red, we've got white, we've got black, we've got brown, and it looks a bit like it might be a granite. And looking at the inside of that, that is really pretty. So it's definitely a granitoid, and we can see the red feldspar going in, as well as quite a bit of quartz going on, which are the clear areas in between. And really, really pretty how this looks. It almost looks like poppy jasper from Northern California, but I know that it's not and that it's a granitoid, but really, really pretty. This actually was a lot prettier on the inside than I thought it was going to be. I love the colors and the pattern of it is much more varied than I thought it was going to be from the outside. Really nice. So this rock is really interesting because it's mostly crystal, mostly translucent, but there's a lot going on. There's tons of what look like tiny red dots and some black and some interesting textures. So let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. And that is pretty cool. So after looking at it under the microscope, I believe that it is quartzite with mica and garnets. We'll take a look at a microscope image so that you can see what those little red dots are that are speckling throughout there are actually garnets, red garnets that are mostly kind of a deep ruby red. And when we zoom in on here, you can see some of that maybe a little bit better here before we even get to the microscope photo. But there's also some interesting structures going on within the rock, which look really cool. I'm not totally sure what those are, but here's the microscope image and you can clearly see the little garnets there from a light pink to a deeper red in the quartzite. Really, really cool specimen. All right, let's check out this rock. So this is a cool one. From the exterior, we see it's mostly black, varying in intensity and then red mixed in as well. I haven't cut any rocks like this before, so I was definitely curious to see what it looked like on the inside, and that is really cool. So it maintains the black and red coloration, but wow, look at the swirl patterns going on in this. Really, really pretty. You'll get a better view of it when we zoom in here on the individual halves. Yeah, look at the patterns in that. That's just gorgeous. So this is, I believe, a jasper light. So my understanding is that the red part is jasper and the black part is essentially iron rich jasper. So really cool. These are carried down from the Canadian Shield via glacier, which is pretty interesting, but really, really cool. I just love the patterns in the black and the red. It looks almost like the flow banding kind of patterns that I get in Wonderstone and Agates out in Nevada. All right, next up, we've got this green rock, and we can see that it's not just plain green. There appears to be a bit of pattern going on on the outside as well, although it's not clear if there's a lot of color variation. There's some white in there, and there's some darker areas, but let's go ahead and take a look at the inside, and that is really cool. So 
I initially thought that this was just epidote and not unikite because I didn't see any red or pink in there. But when I looked at it under the microscope, those dark veins that we see that look black are actually a pinkish red. So maybe it is unikite, I'm not totally sure, but it's definitely dominated by the green. And we have some really cool kinds of patterns going on and even some variation in the gradient of the green itself with a darker bluish kind of green down there towards the bottom and some of those larger class. Really, really pretty. All right, next up, let's check out this rock. So from the outside, we can see it's mostly a dark blue or dark gray color. There's what looks like white veins running throughout. There's also some orange, looks like maybe iron staining on what used to be white crystal there. But let's go ahead and take a look at the inside here. And that's really cool. So I believe this is a silicified conglomerate. So we have a number of different smaller stones here that look like they're mostly in the greenish blue variety. And they're cobbled together with quartz, which is the white that we're seeing in between the different bluish pieces. Let's take a look at the other side. So there's a bit more iron staining on this half, which is the orange color that we see coming in from the exterior. And kind of an interesting abstract, floaty, cloudy interior. I like it. And last but not least, we have the sole representative from the state of Nevada here. And it's an interesting one. So we can see from the top that there's yellow going on amidst a lot of black. And then the exterior has a lot of caliche on it. So we can't really tell what else is going on on that part, but the rest looks pretty dark. And on the interior, it looks much cooler, I think, than the exterior did. We have a light colored layer of wonder stone down at the bottom, essentially. This is appreciated rhyolite. And then we have veins that are running throughout that are actually little druzy crystal veins. So that cave we're zooming in on here, here's a look at it under the microscope. How cool is that? And we can see other parts of it got some of the Wonderstone coloration as well. And then a lot of it just stayed a very dark black color, which is kind of cool too. Really, really unique. And that's it for this week. Thanks again so much for tuning in and thank you to all the current subscribers. And if you made it this far and you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Make sure to let me know your favorites down in the comments and your thoughts. Love to hear them. And I'll see you all next week.